Well, it is November, and that means that it is Epilepsy Awareness Month. I want to welcome Dr. David Sun, neurosurgeon from Norton Neuroscience Institute. That is the treatment de uh, destination for all things neuroscience here in Wave Country. We thank you thank for you. being here. So let's talk about epilepsy. Sure. Um, I get. I, I, I don't know if this is true. I don't know a lot about epilepsy. Mm -hmm. um, when you say epilepsy, is it just one thing that causes epilepsy? No, epilepsy is a very diverse condition. Um, at the end of the day, when we talk about epilepsy, we're talking about people who are suffering from seizures. Right. And there are a long list of causes of seizures, um, brain tumors, strokes, head injuries, some people are just born with seizures. Um, but epilepsy is a problem where you have seizures, you don't know when they're going to happen, and you have to live your life. And even the seizures, and if I'm wrong, I mean, let me know I'm wrong, but even the seizures could be, can be different, right? I can mm -hmm. remember in a high school, a friend of mine had a seizure, and it, it was a full-blown seizure. We didn't know what to do, or people have seizures where they're just not moving, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like they're just kind of still. So even the movement of the seizures can be different, right? Absolutely. The, there's the textbook, what we see in the movies, right? which is the person shaking and falling on the floor and passing out. Um, kids go forever not being diagnosed with seizures because they're just having these tiny one second long staring spells. And it takes a long time for the teachers and the parents and the doctors to figure out they have a problem. So there's a long, there's a wide spectrum of ways it presents. It makes it really challenging to make the diagnosis. So uh, this is what you do. I mean, you are a neurosurgeon. What is new in the study of, of epilepsy? I know that people live full lives. People who have epilepsy, they, they drive, they hold mm -hmm. jobs, they go right on with their lives and do the things that they dream of. Yeah, I mean, the, the beauty of being human is we're, we're adaptable, yeah. right? This is a condition that many, many patients adapt to. They find a way to live their lives. Uh, if they can get their seizures under control with medications, they can go to work, they can drive a car, they can go to school, they're living their best self. Unfortunately, there's a lot of patients that the medications don't help. And that's where a neurosurgeon, and more importantly, a neuroscience team of neurologists and neurosurgeons and neuropsychologists and therapists all get together and try to help those patients. So patients who seizures can't be controlled with medicines, Okay, you take your medicine, it doesn't work. You try a different medicine, it doesn't work. These, these patients are out there. In fact, about 30% of patients with epilepsy continue to have seizures despite it's taking medication. Really? 30%? One That's kind of high, right? It's very scary. Yeah. Yeah. And they estimate, you know, there have been many studies done that sort of estimate the burden of living with epilepsy. And it basically takes about 10 years off of your life. Oh. Um, and that's not just you might die early, which is a risk with epilepsy, but just with doctor's appointments and anxiety and depression and not being able to work. It accumulates into about 10 years of lost life for these patients. So those patients we want to help. And we have a lot of new techniques. Um, different medications are always coming out. We have new surgeries. The traditional surgery that we do for epilepsy is we take out the part of the brain where the seizures are coming from. So if we can find that area of the brain, we can deem it safe to remove it. We actually want to remove that area of the brain. We actually have great research that shows that we, they took patients and flipped the coin and said, you've got, you all, 100 patients have this kind of epilepsy called temporal lobe epilepsy, the most common epilepsy. It comes from an area of the brain over here where the temporal lobe is behind your temple. And they flipped the coin. Half the patients had surgery. The other half didn't have surgery, and they followed them. And the patients that had surgery had better seizure control rates than the ones that kept trying medicines. Yeah. More of them went back to school. More of them got new jobs. More of them had a better quality of life with surgery. So we have a lot of options. Um, and, and the surgery, you, you have a new surgery, mm -hmm. right? That new surgery even, and, and this is what you all do at Norton Neuro. Uh, Science Institute. I mean, you're always trying these things. This Rosa uh, mm -hmm. robotic. What is what is that? So one of the problems with one of the challenges with epilepsy is figuring out where the seizures are coming from. And we do MRI scans and we do EEGs where we measure electrical activity in the brain. But sometimes we need to get into the brain to figure it out. 
In the old days, I used to make a very large incision on someone's head and take off a big piece of bone and lay these electrodes directly on the brain. It's a big traumatic surgery for somebody just to figure out where the seizures are coming from. Yeah. Now we use this device. It's a robot. And I can plan these perfect little trajectories. And using this robot to assist me in the operating room, I can, instead of making a big cut on half of someone's head and shaving half of their head, I, I, can, I can make tiny pencil stab like size cuts in their head and pass these tiny electrodes into the brain to record and try to figure out where the seizures are coming from. Once we figure out where they're coming from, we remove that area if we can. We might use a laser device and use a laser operation to burn away that area if we can. Mm -hmm. And we also have a new device now that's called responsive neurostimulation. And this is a big deal for us. Yeah. This is kind of like a pacemaker for the brain. So we find out where the seizures are coming from. We realize that if we remove that area of the brain, we're going to hurt somebody. We're going to, we're going to hurt their functions. We're going to so paralyze them. So you don't want them. to do that. So you don't want to remove that area of the brain. And five years ago, I said to those patients, I'm sorry, I can't do anything more to help you. But now we can implant a device where we pass another wire into that area of the brain where the seizures are coming from. We connect it to a little computer generator that we actually implant in the skull. And that's recording the electrical activity of the brain 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And when that device sees that a seizure is about to start, it passes a tiny pulse of electricity. And stops it? And it tries to stop the seizure. It's kind of like the smoke alarm smells smoke and sort of starts the extinguisher that puts out the fire. Get out. That's what we're doing now with the brain. And this is, this is tremendous for us because we, these are patients that before we couldn't really help. And now we have the opportunity to help them. What, what would you want to say to somebody that is struggling with epilepsy today, the message you want to give? I think the most important thing is to understand that we have new options. Okay? You, you may have been told in the past, there's nothing you can do, learn to live with this. Okay? And, and that's like I said, that's what humans do. We learn to live with problems, we adapt, we compensate. But we have new options now, we have new techniques that are less scary for people that are more comfortable people for people, that are better options for people. So if you have epilepsy and your seizures are not controlled and people have told you in the past there's nothing we can do, we want to see you because there actually is a chance that we can help you now. What a blessing. What a blessing. NortonHealthcare.com. Search epilepsy. And I've said thank you to them a billion times for being able to sit here. Dr. Sun, thank you. Thank you so much. Very much. All right, when we 